experience in the role would be the answer as a technical director at Manchester United? I think my own honest opinion is that I, I would I would like to see both. I would like to see somebody that's been in that position before, but then a former Manchester United player, a former Manchester United great. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because I think them two roles, they don't have to get in the way of each other. So what you can have, you can have somebody like you say, you know, Steve Walsh, who's been mentioned. You can have somebody like that that knows what it's all about, knows how to get the business done, knows how to identify certain plays, which was shown in particular with his, with his time at, at Leicester. And then what you can then have is, is a former player that's obviously been there and done it and won everything for Manchester United that can then sit down with the players you know and give their opinion and tell them what the football club's all about so I don't see any reason why you can't have I'm not saying I'm not saying one role takes up you know two people but you can have two different roles and you see that with with other football clubs as well you know we've seen it at Dortmund we've seen it at Bayern Munich you know you see it at different clubs and, and what better way to to introduce a, a prospective new signing than getting a player that, that's seen everything there is to, at Manchester United and can speak about the club and you know how they'd love to get it back to its former glory. It's a good point that you make there, Danny. You're talking about two people working side to side, but there yeah. is one man who I can think of who actually is a Manchester United great and has got experience in that role, and that man is Edwin van der Sar. Would that be yes. the obvious appointment? I think that would be the one that you would look at. Obviously, he's done he's done an incredible job at, uh, at Ajax, um, but it's it's whether you can tempt him to leave the football club. You know, Ajax there. You know, people talk about they're on the up again. They've always produced magnificent players. There's no doubt about that, and I think that that's that's a huge part of their history and something that I would imagine Van der Sar is you know keen to keen to maintain that. But if you're not able to get somebody of that quality, then like I say, you can have two people that can do the two separate roles, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, you see that at, you see that at other football clubs as well, where they look at it and go right, okay, we've got one person whose whose expertise is to be able to go and get the players that are needed to, you know, not necessarily to to cross the get them over the line, but to actually get the interest going to to get in touch with the clubs and sort everything out like that and then you can have the purely football person who can then sit down with the player and say listen this is what it means to play for a club like United this is what happened when I was at the club this is what's missing a little bit at the moment but we want to get back then with your help whatever it may be you know we can get back up there so you, what you're giving you're giving you're giving the player an experience of what it is like to play for the club what what the club stands for before the before the play's even signed on the dotted line, which is fantastic. If it's not Van der Sar, Danny, and they do go for, say, these two roles, who would your choice be for that role who's been a former United player to come in? I think there's a there's a number of there's a number of players. Obviously, you know, Darren Fletcher has been mentioned, Rio Ferdinand's been mentioned. You know, so there's been a few there's there's been a number of players that have been mentioned in in that role. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, when the the, the two players that I've just spoken about there that I've just mentioned they they were part of some unbelievable times at United. I'm a big United supporter and watching them with the players that they had at that time was absolutely incredible. It was fantastic to watch and, 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 and great to be a supporter at the time. So as long as you're looking at players that have done what the likes of Rio Ferdinand have done at the club, have done what the likes of Darren Fletcher have done at the club and other players that have been mentioned, other former players that have been mentioned, then you can't go wrong because what you will find is that players that that the club are interested in bringing in they will know all about United as a football club so if you can then get somebody that, that's been there and done it with the club and, and won everything near enough that there is to win and give their experience then I don't think it, 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 it can only be a good thing Danny moving on to the to the squad itself then United have already signed Daniel James obviously this summer they've also shown yeah. interest in Wan Bissaka in Issa Diop Sean Longstaff and Max Aaron so all all young players obviously it seems like a big shift in approach from the big name signings we saw under Louis van Gaal and, and Mourinho do you think it's the right move 100% I think it's needed I think since Sir Alex Ferguson left it's it's been a case of more often than not quick fixes now, if you look at the top two teams in the Premier League, the two best teams in the Premier League, Manchester City and Liverpool, you know, they sign players. All right, they may sign the odd player of, of 30 and, and upwards, but more often than not, they, they'll be a goalkeeper. You know, what they do, they sign players under Klopp and under Guardiola. They, they, they sign players that can, you can build a team around. You know, they're 23, 24. OK, you can look at a centre-half, maybe 26, something along them lines. But you can build a team around those players. United have looked for quick fixes over the years, which, you know, may do well for a season or two. But then you've got to go again. You have to start again. And I think people understand that this isn't a quick fix for United. 
you know, this is going to be something that's going to take time. But in order to get to get success, there has to be patience, there has to be continuity, and there has to be stability. Because what you also have when you're bringing in players after players with different managers, the managers that have brought them in all have different identities, all have different styles. So all of a sudden you've got players, um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now has got players from under Sir Alex Ferguson, under David Moyes, under Van Hal, and under Mourinho, where he wants to be able to build his own team and bringing younger players in, they pick things up a lot easier. They're easy to change certain habits that they have. And that, that's the way of the world. That's not just in football. So I'm very much for going for the younger players that may not be these world stars because you don't necessarily want to sign players that are the finished article. You want to sign players that may be a little bit rough around the edges that you can improve to then be a mainstay of the United team for years to come. Yeah, one of those young players is the Palace right-back Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Mm. What type of player do you think United would be getting if they signed him? And that's £50 million, which it probably will take to get him. Does that represent good value for him? I think it does now. I think what we what you have to do now, if you, we have to understand and we have to appreciate the role of the, of, of, of the modern-day fullback and... It's such a vital role. You only have to look at Liverpool this season. The two fullbacks for for Liverpool were absolutely outstanding, and they're expected to be wingers as well as fullbacks. Because a lot of the time now, what you see if you're playing a four-three-three or a four-two-three-one is the outside players within that front three they more often than not become inverted wingers so they want to go inside so the width is always going to be there for the fullbacks and I think when you look at Solskjaer and the way that he played at certain times throughout the season I believe that his ideal style would be 4-3-3 high pressing uh, two wingers that are inverted which then creates a space for the fullbacks so it becomes so important that you have an attack minded fullback that's going to get forward or otherwise it becomes easier to defend and in wan you know, he, he's a player that you know, not many people knew to, knew to too much about um, a couple of seasons ago I'd spoke to Roy Hodgson about him when I was covering Crystal Palace's game and you know he, he had a real bad baptism of fire his first few games and you know it, it also he's a he's a former winger and it became apparent really when Zaha was playing against him in training and he said he's one of the hardest defenders that I've ever played against and he's just not like looked out of place in any game that he's played at in the Premier League for Crystal Palace so I think he'd be a fantastic signing. Danny, what do you think are the realis- realistic expectations for United this season? Then, I mean, you talk about this uh, this approach with the young players and everything, yeah. and you're fully behind that. I mean, how how patient do you think the fans need to be with it? I think the fans will be patient if they see a if they see a method, if they see a plan. They will be patient. I don't think there's any doubt about that. The problem is with with United is that. There's been so much chopping and changing. There's been so many players coming and, and going and players not being successful because all of a sudden one manager signed him, that manager goes and another manager comes in and he wants a different style of player. So I think that the fans will be patient. I think they will be patient, A, because they have Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who's the manager, and they'll see that he's trying to build a team, build a new team. He's a legend of the football club, which will give him that extra amount of patience. But as long as the supporters see that there's progress because the problem is and when you talk about quick fixes let's not forget the season before the season has just finished United finished second now that was with a certain amount of players and then in the summer you try and bring a few more players in but you're not you're not creating this you're not creating a, a, a stable a stable footing really to work off and that's what United need to do now because one of the things I would say about United over the last few years is that they've lost their identity of what they are on the football pitch and that comes because of the chopping and changing you look at the top clubs around Europe whether it be domestic teams whether it be international teams the top clubs have an identity you know the way they're going to play after five or ten minutes because of the changing the constant change in the constant turnover of players you're not able to get that United so the patience is key now and they have to be patient with, with, with Solskjaer allow him to bring in the plays that he wants to get and understand that in my opinion, you're not going to be challenging to win the league next season. It's going to be slowly but surely. And, you know, that's the way they have to look at it now because they've had the glory years for a long time, which was unbelievable as a supporter. But now you've got to understand that at some point that does come to an end and you have to rebuild. How important is it then, Danny, just just finally about the, mm. with the futures of, of Paul Pogba, David De Gea and Romelu Lukaku, how important is it that their futures are resolved one way or another, whether it's selling them or keeping them? 
Yeah, of course. In, in an ideal world, a manager looks at a situation and he wants his players in from the start of pre-season. But for one for one reason or another, most of the time that doesn't happen. I think, you know, you look at the Gea, they, they need to be trying everything they can to keep him at the club. Lukaku, I think from Solskjaer's perspective, he'll look at it and go, right, OK, where does he fit into the system that I want to play? Paul Pogba, I know a lot of people have, have given him a, a lot of negativity and uh, during the season and what he came out and said last, last weekend. If you can get him to stay at Manchester United and be happy, he would be the type of player, and I know a lot of people disagree, that I would build the team around. But you have to have the players around him to allow him to go and express himself. And one of the things that frustrates me when people talk about Paul Pogba is that when you talk about City, when you talk about Liverpool, uh, when you talk about Spurs, when we talk about the attacking intent of Liverpool, we talk about Firmino, we talk about Mane, and we talk about Salah, and you talk about the two fullbacks. When you talk about Manchester City, you talk about the two Silvers, you talk about De Bruyne, Sterling and Aguero. When you talk about Tottenham, you talk about Eriksen, Son, Dele Alli and Harry Kane. When you talk about United, it's all on Paul Pogba so that can't be right so what you have to do is to is have a collection of plays that can enable each other to thrive and that's what I think Solskjaer wants to do is in terms of building building a team building a new team and, and, and in my opinion hopefully Paul Pogba's part of that Danny great stuff great to speak to you enjoy your holiday Thanks, and we'll man. see you for the new season thank you so as Manchester United fans, you know, they seem to be quite concerned about the lack of business so far this summer. Are they right to be concerned? Uh, look, Solskjaer did say at the end of the season that he wanted all of his new signings ready to start for pre-season July the 1st. That is very, very optimistic because I just think people should have an idea of how signings work. It, it, they don't happen very quickly. To borrow a... Uh, an anecdote that Carve Solokol, my colleague, came up with on a podcast previously, it's like buying a house. If you're interested in a house, unless you've got <laughs> however many thousand pounds in cash, you can't, you can't just go and buy that house the next day. The, the, you have another couple of viewings and then you, you make an offer. And then if the offer's not accepted, you go again. And you it, might, it's the same, you might yeah. have to sell your own. Exactly. And, and that's the same if you look at a player. If a, if a club is interested in a player, there'll be other people who are interested in that player as well. They'll have to watch the player a few times to see if he is right for the football club. And then they'll make an offer. The club are likely to reject that offer. Then they'll have to go again for that offer. To try and get everyone in by July the 1st is very, very optimistic, I think. So I don't think United fans should be too worried that the only signing that's come in as we record this podcast is Daniel James because there are many irons in the fire. We've talked about Aaron Wan-Bissaka, of course, already. But then you've got to also understand that previously, particularly under Sir Alex Ferguson and Manchester United were at their peak, they seem to have the pick of all their players. So if they went for someone, Manchester United more often than not got who they wanted. Now things have changed, not so much because there's so much money swishling around the Premier League amongst a whole host of clubs, but now United find themselves not even in the top four at the moment. They're going to be playing Europa League football next season. How do they entice somebody to come to the football club? Danny Higginbottom actually touched on it when he talked about the technical director role and trying to bring in someone who's got a United history because that could be so important when United are trying to get a deal over the line. Yes, we're playing Europa League football. Yes, we finished sixth. Yes, we finished 36 points or whatever it was behind Manchester City in the Premier League. But this is Manchester United and this is what it means to play for this football club. So I think it's going to... I've been saying it before, it's going to be the most important summer, I think, in United's, well, recent memory since Fergie left. I think you'd have to agree because they've got to get this one right. Well, they decided to keep Juan Mata, two-year extension to his contract. Is that a wise move by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Yeah, I mean, you know, can I just say yes on the basis of him being a great guy? You know, yes. Mata just, he just comes across as a... <laughs> as a top bloke doesn't he and um you know i mean this isn't the most in-depth analysis you'll get but he just seems like a force for good you know with his common goal scheme as well so you kind of feel like the longer he's got a role at a you know a prominent role at a top club the better really um as a player yeah he, he is getting on obviously um but he is clearly a positive influence in the dressing room and he does give united something different you know even last season those goals he scored against 
you know, you think of the Juventus goal, there was a goal against Newcastle, a goal against Chelsea, all very important. So, yeah, I, I, think, it, I think it makes sense, really, and especially if, if United are going to be losing some of these experienced players like, like Paul Pogba, potentially, Lukaku, De Gea, they're all uncertain, aren't they, their futures? I mean, they need, they need to have some experience in there around the young players they're bringing in, so I think it makes sense. I think, also, if you look at what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said in the press release, when Juan Mata signed that contract... He said he understands what it means to be a Manchester United player. Mm -hmm. Just wonder if that was a dig at players who he perceives don't understand what it means to be a Manchester United player. Yeah, well, there's what, a man who, who understands what it's like to be a Chelsea player, and he's been appointed in a technical director role. And it looks like Chelsea have gone down the route that Ed Woodward wants to do at Manchester United. So tell us about that, Don. Yeah, this is the a news we told you about on Sky Sports News, actually, about a month ago, that Chelsea were about to appoint... Uh, Petr Cech as their technical director. Now, we were expecting this actually to come out a bit later because his Arsenal contract officially finishes on June the 30th. 